Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in the Palo Alto studios. SiliconANGLE Media is theCUBE's new 4,500 square foot studio here in our studio. This is our sports center. I'm here with Stu Miniman, analyst at Wikibon on the team. I was at the event all day today, drove down to Palo Alto to give us the latest uh, in-person updates as well as for the past two days, Stu has been at the Analyst Summit, which is Google's first Analyst Summit, Google Cloud. And uh, Stu, we're going to break down day one in the books. Uh, certainly people starting to get onto their uh, after meetups, parties, dinners, and uh, festivities. Um, 10,000 people came to the Google Annual Cloud Next Conference. Um, a lot of customer conversations, not a lot of technology announcements do, but we got another day tomorrow. Hey, John, first of all, Congrats on the studio here. I mean, you know, it, it, it's really exciting. I remember the first time I met you in Palo Alto. You know, there was the the, the, the corner in a you know colo space. You know, a couple Cloud of doors down for fries <laughs> uh, at the kind. And, and look at this space. It's Gorgeous studio, excited to be here. Uh, happy to do a couple videos, and you know, I'll be in here all day tomorrow, uh, helping to break down. Well, Stu, first it allows us to one do a lot more coverage. Obviously, Google Next you saw was literally a blockbuster, as Diane Green said. People were around the block, uh, lines to get in, mass hysteria, chaos. Um, <laughs> they really couldn't scale the the event, which is Google's scale. They need to scale software, but scaling event, no no room for the cube. But we uh, we're pumping out videos. We did uh, what thirteen today. Uh, we'll do a lot more tomorrow and get more analysis. You're going to be coming in as well. But also we had on the ground because we had phone call-ins from Akash Agarwal from SAP. We had an exclusive video with Sam Yen who was breaking down the SAP strategic announcement with uh, Amazon, I mean, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, and of course we have, you know, a post going on siliconangle.com, a lot of videos up on youtube.com slash siliconangle. Uh, great commentary. And really the, the goal was to continue our coverage uh, at SiliconANGLE, the Cube and Wikibon in the cloud. Obviously we've been covering the cloud since it's really been around. Um, I've been covering Google since it was founded. Um, so we have a lot of history, we have a lot of inside baseball, certainly here in Palo Alto, where Larry Page lives in, in the neighborhood. Um, friends are Googlers, so the utmost respect for Google, but really, I mean, come on, the story, you can't put lipstick on a pig, Amazon is crushing them. And there's just no debate about that. And you know, people are trying to put that out there. I wrote a post this morning to actually try to illustrate um, that point. You really can't compare Google uh, cloud to AWS because they're just two different animals, Stu. And, and my point was, okay, you want to compare them? Let's compare them. And and uh, you know, we're well briefed on, on on the cloud players, and you guys have the studies coming out of Wikibon. So there it is. Um, and my post pretty much sum, sums up the the truth, which is Google's really serious about the enterprise. They're making steps. There's some holes. There's some potential fatal flaws in in how they uh, allow customers to park their data. They have some architectural differences. But Stu, it's really a different animal. I mean, it's apples and oranges in the cloud. I don't think it's worthy of complaining because certainly Amazon has the lead, but you have Microsoft, you have Google, you have Oracle, IBM, SAP. They're all kind of in the in the cluster of this NAC, called NASCAR formation where they're all kind of jockeying around. Some go ahead and it really is a race to get the table stake features done and really truly be serious a contender for the enterprise. So you can be serious about the enterprise and say, hey, I'm serious about the enterprise, yeah. but to be serious winner and leader are two different ball games. Okay, yeah, and a, a lot to kind of break down here, John, because first of all, you know, some logistical challenges, absolutely, uh, they scaled that event really big, and you know, kudos to them, 10,000 people, a lot of these things came together last minute. Uh, they treated the press and analysts really well. We got to sit up front, they had some good sessions. Uh, you just tweeted out, you know, Diane Green in the analyst session and in the Q&A after, absolutely nailed it. I mean, she is yeah. an icon in the industry, she, yeah. she's brilliant, um, you know, really impressive, and she's been pulling together a great team of people that understand the enterprise. But who is Google going after and how do they compete against some of the other guys is really interesting to parse because some people were saying in the keynote, you know, we heard more about G Suite than we heard about some of the cloud features. Some of that is because they're going to do the announcements tomorrow. And you keep hearing all this G Suite stuff and it makes me think of Microsoft, not Amazon. It makes yeah. me think of, you Oracle. know, Office 365. And we've been hearing out of Amazon recently, they're trying to go after some of those, you know, business productivity applications. They're trying to go there where Microsoft is embedded. We know everybody wants to go after companies like, you know, IBM and Oracle and their applications because, you know, 
you know, Google has some applications, but really their strength has been on the data. You know, the machine learning and the AI stuff was really interesting. Uh, Dr. Fei-Fei uh, Lee from Stanford, you know, really good piece in the keynote there. Uh, when they hired her uh, not that long ago, uh, you know, the community really perked up and it was really interesting. And, you know, everybody seems to think that, you know, this could be the secret weapon for, for Google. Uh, I actually asked them, I'm like, uh, in some of the one-on-ones, you know, is this the, the entry point? Are most people coming uh, for this piece uh, of the, when it's around these data challenges and the analytics in coming to Google? And they're like, well, it, it's part of it, but no, we, we have a broad play, you know, everything from devices uh, through G Suite. And, you know, last year when they did the show, it was all the cloud. And this year, it's kind of the full enterprise suite uh, that they're pulling in. So there's, there's some of that sorting yeah. out the messaging and how do you pull all these pieces together. As you know, when you've got a portfolio, it's like, oh, well, well, you know, I got to have a customer for G Suite. And then when the customer's up there talking about G Suite for a while, it's like, wait, it's. You wait a know, minute, is this a what, software, is this a SaaS show? Yeah. Is this a workplace productivity show or is this a cloud show? Yeah. Again, this is what my issue is. First of all, you know, the insight is very clear. When you start seeing G Suite, that means they, they got something else that they either hiding or waiting to announce. But the key, though, that is they had customers, and that was one important thing. I pointed out in my blog post, to me, what I'm looking for is competitive wins, and I want to parse out the G Suite because it's easy just to lay that on. Microsoft does it with 365 of Office. Oracle does it with their stuff, and it does kind of make the numbers fuzzy a little bit. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, where's the beef on infrastructure as a service and platform as a yeah. service? And, and, and John, you know, good customers out there. Disney, Colgate. SAP as a partner, HSBC, eBay, Home Depot, which was a big announcement with Pivotal, uh, you know, last year, uh, and uh, Verizon were there. So, you know, the, these are companies, we all know them. Uh, you know, Dan Green was, uh, you know, joking, you know, Disney's going to bring their magic onto our magic uh, and, and make that work. So, you know, real enterprise use cases, um, they seem to have, you know, some good push around developers. They just acquired Kaggle, um, you know, which, which is, uh, you know, working in some of some of that space. Apogee, but um, yeah, Apogee. They I mean, Apogee is an year. API company. Come on, what does that relate to? It's nothing to do with the enterprise. It's an API management solution. Okay, yes, I guess it fits the stack for cloud native and and for developers. I get that, but. This show has to nail the enterprise yeah. too. And John, you remember back four years ago we, when we went to the, you know, the reInvent show for the first time and it was like, they're talking to all the developers and they haven't gotten to the enterprise and then they over pivoted to enterprise. And I listened to the customers that were talking and keynote today and I said, you know, they're talking digital transformation, but it's not like GE and Nike getting up on stage being like, we're going to be a software company and we're hiring lots Moving of Moving our data center and over. We're pulling all, all of our stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, Google's yeah. a good partner and you know, we're using them, but. Yeah, it, but to be it, fair, it Stu, let's be, let's be fair for a second. Yeah. First of all, let's break down the keynote. So, 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 and then we'll get to some of the things about being fair. And I think one, people should be fair to Diane Green because I think that the press and the coverage of it, looking at the media coverage, is weak. Uh, and I'll tell you why it's weak. Because everyone's, the same story is, oh, Google's finally serious in the cloud. That's old news. Diane Green from day one says we're serious with the cloud. That's not the story. The story is, can they be a serious contender? That's number one. On the keynote, one, customer traction. I saw that, um, the slide up there. Yeah, the G Suite in there, but at least they're talking customers. Number two, the SAP news was strategic for Google. Uh, SAP now has Google Cloud Platform. Uh, I mean, Google uh, uh, Cloud support for HANA and also the uh, SAP Cloud Platform. And three, the chief data science from AI, as you pointed out. To me, those were the three highlights of the, of the keynote. Each one thematically represents in at least a positive direction for Google a big time, which is one, customer adoption, the customer focus, two, partnerships with SAP, they had Disney up there, and then three, the real game changer was, can they change the AI machine learning? TensorFlow has a ton of traction. Uh, Intel Xeon chips now are optimized with TensorFlow. Yeah, yeah. This is, yeah. this I, I is mean, look, Google. Yeah, TensorFlow, Kubernetes, this is really interesting. And it's interesting, John, I think if the media listened to Eric Schmidt at the end, he was talking straight to them. He's like, look, bullet one, 17 years ago, I told the Google that this is where we need to go. Bullet two, $30 billion <laughs> I'm investing in infrastructure. And yes, it's real because you know, I had to sign off on you know, all of this money. And you know, we've been all saying for a while, it's like, uh, you yeah. know, is this another beta from Google? Is it serious? There's no ad revenue, what is this? And Diane Green in the Q&A afterwards, uh, you know, somebody talked about, oh, you know, perpetual beta seems to be Google. And she's like, look, I want to yeah. differentiate. We are not the consumer business. The consumer business might kill something, they might change something. 
we're positioning, the, you know, this is a cloud yeah. that the enterprise can build on. We will not deprecate something. We'll awesome. support today. We'll support the old version. We will support you going forward. Yeah, and, and Big I think push for channel, go to market, service and support, uh, because they understand that that's yeah, where but that's those weak. of us that have used Google for years yeah. understand no that, you know, where do I call for Google? Uh, come on, no. <laughs> yeah, but, but they're very weak on that. And we broke that down with Tom Kemp uh, uh, earlier from Centrify where, you know, Google's play is very weak on the sales and marketing side. Yeah, I get the service piece, but go back to Diane Green for a second. She is an incredible savvy enterprise executive. She knows cloud, she moved from server to virtualization, and now she can move virtualization to cloud. That is her playbook, and I think she's well suited to do that, and I think uh, anyone who rushes to judgment on her keynote, given the fail of the teleprompter, I think is a little bit overstepping their bounds, bounds on that. I think it's, it's fair to say that she knows what she's doing, but she can only go as fast as they can go. And that is, you can't like hope that you're further along. The reality is, it takes time. Security and data, obviously key points. Uh, on the on, on your point you just mentioned, that's interesting because now the war goes on. Okay, Kubernetes, the microservices, some of the things going on in the application side as trends like serverless come on, Stu, where you're looking at the containerization trend that's now gone to Kubernetes. This is the battleground. This is the ground that we've been at DockerCon, we've been at Linux, uh, CNCF has got huge traction, the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. This is key. Now, that being said, the marketplace never panned out, Stu. I want to get your analysis on this because you, you cover this. A few years ago, the world was like, oh, I want to be like Facebook. We've heard the, the Uber of this and the Airbnb of that. Here's the thing. Name one company that is the Facebook of their company. Yeah. It's not happening. There is no other Facebook and there is no other Google. So run like Google is just a good idea in principle, horizontally scalable, having all the software, but no one is like Google. No one is like Facebook in the enterprise. So I think that Google's got to down clock their, their messaging. I won't say dumb down, maybe I'll just say slow it down a little bit for the enterprise because they care about different things. Yeah. They care more about SLA than pricing. Yeah, yeah. They care more about data sovereignty than the most epic architecture for data. What's yeah. your analysis? No, John, so some really good points there. So there's a lot of technologies where like, this is really cool and like, Google's the biggest of it. You know, remember that software-defined networking we spent years talking about? Well, the, the first big company we heard about was Google, and they got up on stage. We're the largest SDN deployer, you know, in the world on that, and that's like, great. So if you're yeah. the enterprise, <laughs> um, don't deploy SDN, go to somebody else that can deliver it yeah. for you. If that's Google, that's great. Uh, DockerCon, the first year they had, 2014, Google got up there, talked about how they were using, you know, containers and containers, and they spin up and spin down two billion containers in a week. Yeah. Now, nobody else needs to spin up two billion <laughs> containers in a week and do that down, but they learned from that, they built yeah. Kubernetes off Well, I think that's a good leadership uh, position, but it's a leadership position to show that you got the mojo, which again, this is again, what I like about Google's strategy is, they're going to play the technology card, and I think that's a good card to play, but there are some just table stakes that they got to nail. One is the certifications, the security of the data, but also the sales motions. Going into the enterprise takes time, and I, you know, our advice to Diane Green was, don't screw with the Google culture, keep that technology leadership, and buy somebody, John, buy a company that's got a full-blown sales yeah, force. Well, but John, you know, what, one of the critiques of Google has always been everything they create, they create it like for Google and it's too Googly. I talked to a couple of friends that, you know, know AWS real well, and when they're trying to do Google, they're like, boy, this is a lot tougher. It's not as easy uh, as, as what we're doing. Uh, Google says they want to do a lot of simplicity. Uh, you touched on pricing. It's like, oh, we're going to make pricing so much easier than what Amazon's doing. Uh, you know, Amazon reserve instances is something that, you know, I hear a lot of negative feedback in the community on, and Google's like, it's much simpler, but when I've talked to some people that, that have been using it, it's like, well, in general, it should be yeah. cheaper and it should be easier, but it's not as predictable, and therefore, it's not speaking to what the CFO needs to have. I can't be getting a rebate sometime down the road based on some yeah. advanced math. I need to know what to, what I'm going to be getting and how I'm going to be and using it. And that's a good point, Stu, and this is, comes down to the consumability of the cloud. And I think what Amazon has done well, and this came out of many interviews today, but it was highlighted by Val Bertravici, who taught, pointed out that Amazon makes, has made their service consumable by the enterprise. I think that's important. Google Google needs to start thinking about how enterprises want to consume cloud and hit those points. The other thing that Val and I teased out was kind of uh, some new ground, and he coined the term, or used the term, maybe he coined it, maybe not, I'm not sure, um, empathy. Um, 
enterprise empathy. Google has developer empathy. They understand the developer community. They're rock solid on open source. Obviously, their mojo's phenomenal on technology, AI, et cetera, TensorFlow, all that stuff's great. Ent empathy for the enterprise, not there. And I think that's something that they're going to have to work on. And again, that's just evolution. You mentioned Amazon, our first event, developer, developer, developer. I mean, Pat Gelsinger once called AWS the developer cloud. Now they're truly the enterprise cloud. It took three years for Amazon to do that. So you just can't jump to a trajectory. This huge amount of diseconomies of scales do to try to just be an enterprise player overnight because we're Google. That's just not going to fly. And whether it's sales motions, pricing and support, Security, this is hard. Yeah, and, and sorting out that go-to-market is going to take years. You, know, you see a lot of the big SIs are there. PwC, everywhere at the show. Accenture, you know, big push of the show. We saw that a year or two ago at the Amazon show. Um, I talked to some friends in the channel, and they're like, yeah, Google's still got work to do. They're yeah. not there. Look, Amazon has work to do on the go-to-market, and Google is still yeah. a couple of I mean, years Amazon's no spring that. chicken here. I mean, yeah. you, they're quietly, slowly ramping up, but they're not in a good position with their sales force vis-a-vis -vis where they want to be. Um, let's talk about technology now. So, so tomorrow we're expecting to see a bunch of stuff, and one area that I'm super excited about with, with Google is if they can um, have their identity identified and, and solidified with the mind of the enterprise, make their product consumable, change or adjust or buy a sales force that could go out and actually sell to the enterprise, that's going to be key. But you're going to hear um, some cool trends that I like. And if you look at the TensorFlow and the relationship Intel, we're going to see Intel on stage tomorrow coming out um, and during the, one of the keynotes. Uh, and you're going to start to see the Xeon chip uh, come out. And you start to see now the silicon piece. And this has been a data center nuance too, as we talked about with James Hamilton at Amazon, which is having uh, hardware being optimized for software really is the key. And what Intel's doing with Xeon, and, just, and we talked to some of their people today about it, is that the cloud is like an operating system. It's a global computer, if you want to look at that. It's like a mainframe, the software mainframe, is, as it's been called. You want a diversity of chipsets from two cores Atom to 72 cores Xeon. And have them being used in certain cases, whether it's you know, programmable silicon or whether it's GPUs. Having these things in use case scenarios where the, the chips can accelerate the software evolution, to me is going to be the key state of the art uh, innovation. I think if Intel continues to get, get that right, Companies like Google are going to crush it. Now, Amazon, they do their own, right? So this is going to be another interesting dynamic. Yeah, it was It was actually one of the you know differentiating points Google's saying is like, hey, you can get the Intel Skylake chip on Google Cloud probably six months before you're going to be able to just call up your favorite OEM of choice and get that yeah. in there. And it's an interesting move because, you know, you know, we've been covering for years, John, Google does a ton of servers. And they don't just do Intel, they've been heavily involved in the open power movement, uh, they're looking at alternatives, they're looking at low power, they're looking at, you know, from their device standpoint, uh, I mean, yeah. you know, they understand how to develop to all of these pieces. Uh, they actually gave to, you know, the influencers, the press, and the analysts, you know, just like at Amazon, we all walked home with Echo Dot, you know, everybody's walking home with the Google Homes. Uh, so what's did that you get one? mean? I, I did get one, disclaimer. Yeah, I, I got one, I'll be playing with it at home. I figure I can have Alexa and Google talking. Is it an evaluation unit? You have to give it back, or do you have to keep? No, I'm pretty sure they they, they <laughs> just let us keep that. Tainted. But, um, Tainted. <laughs> uh, but what I'm interested to see, John, is you know we talk like serverless. So I saw a ton of companies that were playing with Alexa at reInvent, and you know they've been creating tons of skills. Um, you know, Lambda, you know, currently has the leadership out there. Google leverages serverless in a lot of their architecture. It's what drives a lot of their analytics on the inside. Coming into the show, uh, Google Cloud Functions is alpha, yeah. so we expect them to move that forward. But we will I see mean, what the we'll, announcements come tomorrow. But you know, you would think if they're you know to try to stay that leadership though there. Um, I actually I, I got a statement from uh, one of the guys that works on the serverless, and Google believes that you know for for functions that whole serverless to really go where it needs to be, it needs to be open. Google you know isn't open sourcing uh, anything yeah. this week as far as I know, but you know they want to be able to move forward. And they're doing, they're doing and great in open source, do. and I think one of the things that, that, not to rush to judgment on Google, and, and no one should by the way, I mean certainly we put out our analysis and we stick by that, and because we know the enterprise pretty well, uh, very well actually. So the, the thing that I like is that there are new use cases coming out, and we had someone came on the queue here, um, Tarun Thakkar, who's with D Datos, D-A-T-O-S dot I-O. They're reimagining um, 
data back up and recovery in the cloud. And when you factor in IoT, this is a paradigm shift. So I think we're going to see use cases, and this is a Google opportunity where they can actually move the goalposts a bit on the market by enabling these new use cases, whether it's you know, something as, as what might seem pedestrian, like backup and recovery, certainly re-mentioning that's huge. That's going to take impact as the data domains of the world and whatnot, the traditional on-prem. These new use cases are going to evolve, and so I'm, I'm excited by that. But the key thing that came out of this, dude, and this is where I want to get your reaction on, is multi-cloud. Clearly, the, the, the messaging in the industry over the course of events that we've been covering and highlighted today on Google Next is multi-cloud is the world we are living in. Now, you could argue that we're all in Amazon's world right now, but as we start developing, you're starting to see the emergence of cloud service providers. Cloud service providers are going to have some tiering, certainly the big, the big ones, and then you're going to have secondary partner-like service providers. And Google putting G Suite into the mix and um, Office 365 for Microsoft and Oracle putting their apps in their, their cloud st stuff highlights that the SaaS market is going to be very relevant. If that's the case, then why aren't we putting Salesforce in there, Adobe, they all got clouds too. So if you believe that there's going to be a specialism around clouds, that opens up the notion that there'll be a series of multi-cloud architectures so, Stu. Yeah, so, I mean, John, first BS, of all, right, real, I mean, look, what's going on? Cloud is this, you know, big, broad <laughs> term. From Wikibon's research standpoint, SaaS today is two-thirds of the public cloud market. We spend a lot of in time revenue? talking in, in revenue, in revenue standpoint. So, absolutely, Salesforce, Oracle, Infor, Microsoft, you know, all up there, big dollars. If we look at the much smaller part of the world that's infrastructure as a service, that's where we're spending a lot of time. And platform as a service, which Gartner kind of bundles in, that's how yeah, Gartner well, looks at it. It's interesting, you know, this year we're saying PaaS as a category goes away. It's either SaaS plus or, yeah, I'm sorry, it's SaaS minus or infrastructure plus. So look at what Salesforce did with Heroku, look at like what company ServiceNow are doing. Um, you know, yes, there are Why solutions. is PaaS going away? What's the thesis, what's the premise of that for Wikibon uh, so, research? You know, if we look at what PaaS, the, the idea was um, it, it's tied to languages, things like portability. There are other tools and solutions that are going to be, be able to help there. Uh, look at, you know, Docker came out of a PaaS company, DocCloud. There's a really good, uh, you know, article from you know, one, of the, one of the Docker guys talking about the history of this. And you and I are going to be at DockerCon. John. From what I hear, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about Kubernetes yep. at DockerCon. <laughs> uh, OpenStack Summit is going to be talking a lot about By the way, Kubernetes source originated at Google. Yeah, yeah. You know, another cool thing from Google. All right, so you know the the PaaS is a market. Even if you talk to um, you know the Cloud Foundry people, the OpenShift people, uh, you know the term we got had a year ago was PaaS is passe. Yep. Uh, you know, was the, 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 the nice pithy line. So um, it really feeds into because just some of these categorizations are what we as industry watchers have put in there. When you talk to Google, it's like, well, why are they talking about G Suite and Google Cloud and even some of their pieces? They're like, well, th this is our bundle that we put together. When you talk to Microsoft and talk about Cloud, it's like, oh well, you know, they're including Skype in that. They're including Office 365. Yeah, I'm it, like, well, that's part of our productivity. That's a part of our overall yeah. solutions. You know, Amazon. Even when you talk to Amazon, it's not like there are two separate companies. There's not AWS yeah. and Amazon. It's one company. Are we living in a world? Of, are we living in a world of alternative facts too? I mean, Larry Ellison <laughs> coined the term "fake cloud," talking about Salesforce. I'm not going to say Google's a fake cloud because certainly it's not. But no. when you start blending in these numbers, it's it's kind of shifting the narrative to having alternative facts, certainly skewing the revenue numbers. To your point, if pass goes away because the SaaS minus is that lower down the stack, because if you have you know, microservices and orchestration, it kind of thins that out. So one, that's that the case. And then, you know, I saw your tweet uh, with Sam uh, Ramjay. He formerly ran Cloud Foundry. Yeah. He's now at Google, yeah. knows his stuff, ex-Microsoft guy, very strong uh, dude. What's he take, what's his take on this? Did you get a chance to chat with Sam at all? Yeah, or? so I mean, it was, it was interesting, because Sam, right, coming from Cloud Foundry, he said what Cloud Foundry was, one of the things they were trying to do uh, was to really standardize across the clouds. and. Of course, a little biased that he yeah. works at Google now, but he's like, we couldn't do that with Google because Google had really cool features. And of course, when you yeah. put an abstraction layer on, can I actually do all the cool stuff? Yeah. So it's like, oh, we couldn't do that. Sure, if you talk to Amazon, yeah. they'll be like, come on. <laughs> thousand features we announced last year. Look at all the things yeah. we have. It's not like you can just take all of our pieces and you know use it there. Yes, at the you know at the VM or container or you know yeah. application microservices layer, you know we can sit on a lot of different clouds, yeah. uh, you know public or private. But you know 
Yeah, so it, as we said, today, cl look, cloud is not a utility. Uh, you know, John, you've been in these discussions for years that we talked yeah. about, oh, I'm just gonna have a cloud broker and you know, go out in the service. It's like, this is not, you know, well, look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not buying from, you know, Domino's and Pizza Hut, and it's, you know, a pepperoni pizza is a pepperoni pizza. Um, well, well multi-cloud and moving workloads across clouds is a different challenge. And certainly I might have to have some stuff here, I mean, to put some data and edge my bets on, on, on leveraging other services, but this brings up the total cost of ownership problem. If you look at the trajectory, say OpenStack, just as a random example, OpenStack at one point was had a great promise. Now it's kind of niched down into uh, infrastructure service. I know you're going to be covering that summit in Boston, and it's going to be interesting to see how that is. But the, the word in the community is, is that OpenStack is struggling because of the deployment challenges involved with it. So to me, Google has an opportunity to avoid that OpenStack kind of concept because, you know, talking about Sam Ramjay, open source is the wild card in all this. So if you look at open source, and if you believe that that past layer is thinning down to be infrastructure and SaaS, then you got to look at the open source community and that's going to be a, a key uh, area that we're certainly watching and we've identified and we've mentioned it before. But here's my point. If you look at the total cost of ownership, if I'm a customer, Stu, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to just move to the cloud, uh, I need to rely and lean on my partner, my vendor, my supplier, Amazon or Google or Microsoft or whoever, to provide really excellent manageability, really excellent security, because if I don't, I have to build it myself. So there's becoming the, the shark fin, the tip of the iceberg that you don't see the hidden costs, because I would much rather have more confidence in manageability that I can control, but I don't want to have to spend resources building manageability software if the stuff doesn't work. Yeah. So there's the issue about multi-cloud that I'm watching. Your thoughts? Yeah. Um, so. Or is that too nuanced? So no, no. I, for, first of all, you know, one of the things is that if I look at what I was doing on-premises before versus public cloud. Um, yes, there are some hidden costs, but in general, I think we understand them a little bit better in public cloud. And public cloud gives us a chance to do a do-over for things like security, which you know most of us understand that you know security is good in public cloud. Now, security overall, lots of work to do. Uh, challenges, not security isn't the same across all of them. Uh, we've talked to plenty of companies that are helping to give security across clouds, but uh, this multi-cloud uh, discussion is still something that is sorting out. Uh, you know, portability is, is not simple, um, but you know, it, it's where we're going today. You know, most companies, if I'm not really small, have some on-prem uh, pieces, and you know, they're leveraging at least one cloud. They're usually using many SaaS providers, and there's this whole giant ecosystem, uh, John, around the cloud management platforms, because managing across lots of environments is definitely a challenge. Um, there's so many companies that are trying to solve them, uh, and we, you know, there's, there's just dozens and dozens of these companies attacking everything from you know, licensing to the data management to, you know, everything else. So there, there's a lot of challenges there, especially the, the larger you get as a company, uh, the, the, the more things you need to worry about. So, um, Stu, just to wrap up our segment, great day. I wanted just to get some color on the day and um, highlighting some parody uh, um, from, the, from the web is always great. Just got a, a tweet from fake Andy Jassy, um, which we know isn't really Andy Jassy, but um, Cloud Opinion was very active the hashtag, the, the Twitter handle Cloud Opinion, uh, but he had a Medium post and he said, um, Eric Schmidt was boring, Diane Green was was horrible. Um, unfortunately, day one keynotes were missed opportunity. They left several gaps, failed to portray Google's vision for the Google Cloud. They could have done the following. A, explain the vision for the cloud. Where, where do they see Google Cloud going? Identify customer use cases that show sample of customer adoption. They kind of did that, so I discount that. My favorite line is this one. Differentiate from other cloud providers, quote, we're Google, damn it, isn't working so well. <laughs> Neither is indirect shots at S3 downtime work that, that didn't, didn't work either as well as either. Where's the customer's journey going and what's the most compelling thing for customers? This, this phrase, we're Google, damn it, has kind of speaks to the arrogance of Google. And, and you know, we've seen this before, and I always say, Google doesn't have a bad arrogance. I like the, the Google mojo. I think the technology, they run, at, they run hard, but they can sometimes, you know, like, hey, customer support, uh, self-service, you know, no one knows, you can't really get someone on the phone. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get replies from Google. Check our YouTube video, we own that too, don't you know that? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you know so, so this is a perception of Google. Yeah. Um, this could fly in the face, and that arrogance might blow up on the enterprises. The enterprises 
aren't that uh, aren't that sophisticated to kind of yeah. recognize the mojo from Google and then say, hey, I want support, I want SLAs, I want security, I want data um, uh, flexibility. So, so your thoughts? Claude Opinion wrote, I, I thought, a really thoughtful piece leading up to it that I didn't think was satire. Some of what he's putting in there is definitely satire. Uh, 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 Some of uh, it's kind of true, though. From I mean, the keynote. So I did not get a sense in the meetings I've been in or watching the keynote that they were arrogant. It was... Uh, you know, there's, they're, they're growing, uh, they're learning, uh, they're working with the community, uh, they're, they're reaching out, they're, they're doing a bunch, they're doing all the things we think they need to do. They're listening really well. Um, so, you know, yes, I think the keynote was a missed opportunity overall, but... But that was, there was, gotta give, you know, point out that was a teleprompter fail. Yeah, well, that, that was, was a, a piece of it, but even, you know, we felt that you know, with a, with a little bit of polish, uh, some of the interactions would have been a little bit smoother. Uh, I thought Eric Schmidt's uh, you know piece was really good at the end. Uh, as I, I said before, the the AI discussion uh, was enlightening uh, and, and really solid. So yeah. um, you know, I, I don't give it a glowing rating, but I'm I'm not ready to trash it. Yeah. Uh, and tomorrow is when they're going to have the announcements. And overall, um, there's good buzz going at the show. There's lots give going a, on. Give Absolutely. him a letter. Letter grade. Um, for the keynote or Everything. the show in general? So far, your experience as an analyst, because you had the, the again, the, give them credit, I agree with you, first analyst conference, they are listening, and yeah. the slides show it, you see what they're doing, they're, they're, not, they're being humble. Um, they didn't take any real direct shots at, at the competitors. Yeah, and, they and, were and, really and, humble. And that is something that I think they could have helped to, you know, focus on some of that, differentiate a little bit. It's something we had to pry out of them in some of the one-on-ones is like, come on, you know, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're winning 50, 60% of our yeah. competitive deals. I'm like, well, explain to us why, because we're not hearing it. You're not articulating it as well. Um, it's, it's not like we expect them, you know, it's like, oh, wait, they told us we're arrogant. Maybe we should be super humble now. Um, it's, it's kind I of don't interesting. Think I, I don't there. think that I think there's. I just. I don't think that they're thinking that way. I yeah. think my impression of Google, knowing the company's history and the people involved there, and Diane Green in particular, as you do, you know, from the VMware days, um, she's kind of humble, but she's not. She's she's tough, oh, yeah. and she's good, and she's smart. Yeah. So and she's bringing in really I, good people. I think By the she, way, John. What I want to give them kudos. They really supported International Women's Day. Uh, you know, I, I love the, uh, you know, Feifei got up and she talked about her, uh, you know, one of her compatriots, another badass woman uh, up there that got like one, yeah. one of the big, you know, moments of, of, of the keynote there. So did they, have um, a, did they have a women in tech panel? Um, not at this event because they had, I mean, Diane was there, Feifei was there. Okay. Uh, they, they, they had some women just participating in it. I That's know great. they yeah. had some other events going on throughout the show. Um, I agree, and I think it's awesome. And I think one of the things that I like about Google, and again, I'll reiterate, is that apples and oranges relative to the other cloud guys. But remember, just because Amazon lead is so far ahead that you still have this jockeying of position between the other players, and they're all taking the same pattern. Again, this is the same thing we talked about at our other analysis, is that certainly at reInvent we talked about the same thing. Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, and now Google are differentiating with their apps. And I think that's smart. I don't think that's a bad move at all. I think you know, it does telegraph a little bit that maybe they got, you know, they could have more to show. We'll see tomorrow. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Again, it does make the numbers a little messy messy in terms of what's what, but I don't I think it's totally cool for a company to differentiate on their offering. Yeah, definitely. And and John, as you said, Google is playing their game. They're not trying to play Amazon's game. They're 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 not you know uh, you know Oracle's thing was what you know you kind of you know get a little bit of the lead and kind of you know just yeah. make sure how you, you attack and stay ahead of what they're doing. Kind of the boating analogy there. But you know Google yeah. knows where they're going, moving themselves forward. That they've made some really good progress. I mean, you know the amount of people, the amount of news they have. Yeah. Um, are they moving fast enough to really try to close a little bit on the Amazon's world is something I want to come out of this yeah. show with. Um, you know, where are customers going? And but, it's, and uh, it's a know, turbulent they're, they're, they're time too, times. as Peter Burris, uh, uh, our, our own Peter Burris at Wikibon would say, it's a turbulent time. And it's going to really put everyone on notice. There's a lot to cover if you're an analyst. Yeah. I mean, you have compute, network, storage, services. I mean, there's a slew of stuff that's being rolled out either in table stakes for existing enterprises, plus new stuff. Yeah. I mean, I didn't hear a lot of IoT today. Did you hear much IoT? Is, yeah, there, well, is there IoT coming? You had the briefing. Come on, I'm sure there's some service coming out from Google that'll help <laughs> us be able to process all this stuff much faster. Well, they'll just replace us with me. So you're in the analyst meeting. I know you're under NDA, but is there IoT coming tomorrow? 
Um, uh, IOT was a term that I heard this week, yes. <laughs> okay, so, all right, so that's, that's a confirmation. <laughs> Stu can uh, confirm or deny that IOT will be there tomorrow. Okay, well, that's gonna end day one of coverage here in our studio. As you know, we got a new studio. We have folks on the ground. You're gonna start to see a new Cube uh, formula where we have in-studio coverage and out, out in the field, like our normal Cube, our game day, as we say getting all the uh, signal, extracting it from that noise out there for you. Again, in-studio allows us to get more content. We bring our friends in, we want to get the content, we're going to get the summaries and share that with you. I'm John Furrow, Stu Miniman, day one coverage. We'll see you tomorrow for another full day of special coverage, sponsored by Intel, two days of coverage. We want to thank Intel for supporting our editorial mission. We love the enterprise, we love cloud, we love big data, love smart cities and autonomous vehicles and the changing landscape in tech. We'll be back tomorrow, thanks for watching.